Right, this webinar is being live streamed. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Grand. I'm the CEO here at MedTech Innovator. For those of you who've never been with us before, MedTech Innovator is an accelerator, but we're a little different than most accelerators. We are not a uh, place that you come if you have an idea and you want to start a company. We are what I call a downstream accelerator. And what that means is the companies that are part of the MedTech Innovator program are all companies that are up and running. They've got teams, they've got products that are at least at the prototype stage and many are much further along. Um, this is an opportunity for these companies to connect with leaders in the ecosystem that MedTech Innovator provides to make their companies better so that when they reach the market, they offer the maximum value possible. Um, we have in our US program, we have 54 companies that are part of the cohort in our Biotools Innovator program. We have 14 companies that are part of the cohort. And in our Asia Pacific program, we have 20 companies that are part of that cohort. So we have a lot of companies um, that are participating this year, 88 companies. Um, and this is part of a larger ecosystem um, of MedTech Innovator. And all these companies get the opportunity to work together in various ways uh, and to help each other um, as part of working with all of um, our overall ecosystem of mentors and, and others. So uh, I recommend that for this webinar today, that there's a, a, a companion webinar that you watch uh, that explains a lot more about creating videos and why we create these videos and storytelling in general. Um, it's a fantastic discussion that I had with uh, my friend, John Weiser, whose career was spent in entertainment, um, most recently as the head, um, the uh, president at Sony Pictures Entertainment, um, where one of his perks in his job was getting to coach Shark Tank um, and uh, to talk to people about how to tell great stories. So I highly recommend you watch that separate video because it really does delve into the storytelling and a lot more about why we create these videos. As a very short version of that, I will just say right now that one of the main assets that MedTech Innovator provides um, during its program is a tangible asset that you leave with if you're one of our cohort companies is a one minute video. Um, and sometimes they're a little longer than one minute. We ask everybody to try and target one minute in length. Um, but the opportunity is to tell your story in a very compact way um, that somebody who watches the video gets enough of a teaser to want to meet with you, to want to have a follow up, to want to to want to learn more. Um, and I think that's really the key thing that I want to want to tell everybody um, that this is not about um, telling your entire story and getting into all the detail about every aspect of your company. You can't do that in one minute. So this is just the highlights. Um, the opportunity is to tell the story in a way that that gets people to remember your company, um, that you you leave the video and you go, wow, I want to know more. Um, wow, I like that company. Like you want to leave with that kind of an emotion of some kind where you say, you know, this is, you know, this company looks interesting to me. Um, I always tell people that a perfect pitch in any length is one that makes people say, boy, how do I, how do I, you know, quit my job and work for that company or how do I write them a check? Um, it's hard to do that in one minute, but I can tell you that when you watch in the videos we'll be watching today, you're going to get that kind of a feel. Um, and, and I think that's what we should all be striving for when we make a video of any length. Um, is to have people go, wow, I want to know more. Like, what a great company. Um, what a great mission. Um, this is so interesting. If they, don't, if they don't watch the video and copy it and say, and forward it to somebody else um, or reach out to you or Google you and find you, you know, it, you know again, I think it, it hasn't delivered on its potential. So it should be that kind of thing where someone goes to their spouse and says, boy, how do we, how do we write a check to this company? So, so that's a little bit of an overview of kind of the goal of these videos is to create something that is, um, is going to have that kind of an emotion or connection with the viewer. Um, the second thing I'll mention is that at MedTech Innovator, in addition to having these videos be part of um, an asset that the company can have going forward, it's also uh, something that we use as part of a video competition. And for that reason, we ask companies to try and keep it as close to one minute as possible. And when they go over one minute, we penalize them a little bit in our calculations. Um, every year we still have companies that win that are over one minute in length. Um, and that's because um, they had so many votes and so much support that they still wind up winning the video competition. Um, but we do urge people to try and keep to one minute because there's something really fun about trying to tell your story in one minute. 
Um, and, uh, and as I said, we'll, we're going to get into some of those story elements in a little bit. Um, but before we do that, I want to introduce our panelists for today. Um, so we've got three panelists who are all MedTech Innovator alumni, um, and they all had great videos. Um, they had uh, winning videos in, in most cases. And so we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about you know, what it took to make those videos. That's what we're going to be discussing mainly today. Um, for those of you are, who are here on on YouTube watching us, um, you, have, uh, you have a YouTube chat box uh, next to the video. You can, you can put a question in there. And if we have time, we'll try and get to that um, towards the end of the video or at some part in this first hour. Um, for those of you who are here on Zoom in the MedTech Innovator cohort, I see there's 73 of you. Um, for those of you who are here, um, you have the Q&A button at the bottom of Zoom. If you have questions that you want me to address, please use Q&A, don't use the chat button, use the Q&A box. And I will be monitoring that. I'm gonna have that open on the side of my screen. I'll be watching that. And if I see questions that I think I need to stop and ask somebody and interrupt the, you know, the discussion to address the question, I will absolutely do that. Um, if it's an immediate question, if it's something that we can save for the, the private Q&A at the end, we'll do that as well. So for those of you, again, um, who are part of MedTech Innovator or Biotools Innovators cohorts, that's your way of asking questions. Use Q&A. Um, and I will get to your question, I promise. So with that introduction, um, let me go now to our, our three um, guests for today. Uh, and I'm going to introduce each of them, uh, and one by one, I'll bring them up here on the screen so you can get a chance to, to meet them. So I'm going to start off with first with, uh, with Jim West from Clara Biotech. Um, Jim, let me bring you up on the screen over here. Um, so Jim, you want to uh, just unmute yourself and, uh, and tell if you're, if you're muted. Um, I don't think you're muted. Uh, and tell us, about, tell us a little bit about you and Clara Biotech very briefly. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, Jim West, CEO of Clara Biotech. We founded the company in 2018 with some technology from the University of Kansas to help uh, bring in the next generation of uh, exosome technologies to the market, both for diagnostics and therapeutic purposes. Terrific. Thank you. Um, let me add in Blythe Caro, um, formerly of Everin Technologies. Um, Blythe, um, tell us about yourself. Hey guys. Uh, so yeah, I uh, am former CEO of Everin Technologies. I co-founded it also in 2018. We're developing an earbud that delivers vagal nerve stimulation for the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. Life. Uh, and then last, uh, we've got Nick Scare. Um, Nick, um, let me add you in over here as well. Um, Nick, you want to introduce yourself? You are muted, Nick. Oh, yeah, sorry, muted there. Um, thanks, Paul. Great to be back here. Uh, Nick Scare. Um, I founded Orthox uh, in 2009, so quite a while back. Um, we have a technology which originated in Oxford University, which is where I'm based. And uh, we're developing a biomaterial implant platform focused on cartilage repair, uh, moving into clinical trials this year. So um, been a long road, but uh, one that's worth traveling. Terrific. All right. So for the three of you, what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and one by one, I'm going to play your videos. Um, so we're going to start off with that um, so that everybody gets a chance to see the video. And then I'm going to ask you guys some questions about your videos. Um, for those of you, again, who are watching here as part of our cohort, um, uh, what I want you to do, if you have questions, I have a whole series of questions for each of these panelists that's going to ask them, it's going to probe about how they created this video and some of the things that went into it. Um, I will tell um, everybody who's out there watching on YouTube, um, you know, that these videos are not ones that we expect people to spend a lot of money creating. And yet you'll see that these are very high quality. Um, and so I'm just going to preface by before I play these. Um, that you don't watch this video and go, oh, they obviously spent a fortune on that. Um, but I will be asking that question too, as one of the questions about how much you guys spent. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, play the videos. Um, I'm going to start off with Jim's. Um, so we'll go through these one by one. Um, and, and while I'm doing that, I'll also probably pull the, uh, the spotlights over here. So, um, so let me do that too really quick um, so that... We don't fill up the screen with all of us while we're doing this. So hold on. Um, and uh, Blythe and Nick, sorry, one sec. Um, all right, so, and I'll remove my spotlight too. 
All right. So um, let's go ahead and uh, and watch these videos. As I said, we're going to do these one by one, um, and I'm going to go full screen on these so we can we can really get a, a nice feel for these. So hold on one moment, and let's watch our first video. So this is going to be Clara Biotech first. Um. Clara Biotech was founded to help move exosomes from the bench to the bedside. Exosomes are nanoparticles made by all cells and act as the FedEx communication system of the body. We believe exosomes offer the promise to diagnose and cure diseases like Alzheimer's and cancer. The benefits of our platform is both in the purity and the specificity of our product and output, as well as a scalable processing platform. Exosomes have been notoriously difficult to purify until now. The industry requires pure exosomes and a scalable platform, and Clara offers a solution. That allows us to have the exosomes ready for downstream applications, which is very appealing to researchers, therapeutic companies, and diagnostic companies. Our company is going to be developing manufacturing and quality support for diagnostic applications, therapeutic manufacturing, and regenerative medicine. It's going to enable the next generation of technologies. All right, nice job, uh, Jim. Um, so Jim, uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll bring you back up here um, uh, as well on on our stage over here. Um, so so Jim, um, we've got you spotlighted, and uh, and I'll bring myself up here too. Uh, and so so basically, Jim, uh, let's start off with just a couple things. Number one, um, uh, you know that video, uh, I, as I mentioned in the outset over here. Some of these videos are are longer than others. Um, yours was exactly one minute. Um, was that was that was that hard to do to get it to one minute? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was. Uh, I think the first versions came in at like a minute five, and we didn't do all of the editing ourselves, so we kind of gave them a specification of it had to be exactly sixty seconds or or slightly less. And I think at the end we ended up shortening some of the closing credit logo just to fasten that up to, to get to the right time. All right, good. Well, um, nice job on, on getting that to one minute. And again, I want to make sure I note uh, that you did win uh, the video competition. So uh, so it was well received. Um, uh, so, you know, a couple quick questions. Um, so overall, um, how much time do you think you would estimate you and the team um, put into creating this video? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think it it's, it's hard to give like an exact hour count because it was a lot of just kind of setting up and coordinating and, and things like that. But I think at the front end, it was kind of like, we knew we needed some resources to help us do a professional video. So it was kind of reaching out and finding those resources, finding people who could help with different phases and aspects. Um, so we interviewed multiple videographers, multiple groups. We looked at doing it ourselves. We kind of evaluated some of those options. So that wasn't too much time, but it was, you know, maybe five hours, six hours. And then um, the actual production and the rest of it wasn't too bad. We ended up uh, doing a little bit of prep, but, but we really just kind of did one day of filming. And um, so that took up a whole day of pretty much everybody's time. But we did, you know, we were done by like two o'clock and we had all the filming done. And then it was uh, multiple rounds of just editing and proofing till it was done. Okay. Um, and, and then time-wise, I think I had, I made a note here because I looked it up on these questions. We started on August 17th. And we had a final video on September 23rd. So it was right about one month of time. From start, yeah, elapsed time from start to finish and deliver the video. So you spent about a month. Okay, that's good um, in getting that out there. Um, and you mentioned, you know, interviewing and working with outside people. So how much do you think you spent if you had to estimate in total on creating this? So video? cash out of pocket, we spent less than $3,000. That's amazing. Okay, good less than $3,000. Well, it's good. You also want a, a, a prize. You want a $10,000 prize, I think. So yeah. that's <laughs> it paid off. <laughs> but yeah, but, but again, you know, $3,000 for that video is kind of incredible. You know, I watched that video and to me, it looks like something I might've seen on, uh, you know, from any large company. Um, I would, I would think that was a terrific video. So yeah. I so just to give you like a, some additional context here, because I think this is helpful. We, we talked to, uh, I remember we talked to at least three different groups. And the first one said, I can do it for $5,000 because they were cutting us a deal. 
Um, and I was like, that's great, but my, that's not my budget. <laughs> and uh, I, I told them a budget, they're like, well, maybe we could film it, you could edit it. And I was like, okay, I was kind of leaning towards that because I know enough about video editing. I felt like I could, I could pull something together based off of it if, if we had the film. And then we found another group and they were like, yeah, we can do it. It'll be $20,000. Maybe we can do it for 15. Um, and I was like, yeah, well, that's, that's clearly not gonna work. And uh, then I got networked and I knew someone who did some videography in the past. I reached out, I said, could you help? And she's like, no, I can't, but I know, you know, go talk to this group. And uh, they were excited, they were motivated and they were able to do it within the uh, incredibly small budget that I, that I offered. <laughs> All right, great. Um, I'm not going to get to all the questions um, yeah. that I gave you in advance. I'm just going to ask some of them right now, um, and then I'm gonna, we're going to do the other videos, and then we'll we'll do some group questions. Um, but but one other thing um, uh, I want to, or a couple other questions here before we we go on to the next video. Um, so uh, in terms of in terms of the um, the the prep that you guys that you did for this. Um, did you watch other videos for inspiration? Did you, mm -hmm. um, you know, did you storyboard? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a great question. We did watch a lot of the past videos that you guys provided. We kind of went through and, and looked at those and kind of looked at what we liked and, and, and didn't like. Um, I was in the process of kind of thinking through like, you know, what should the story of this video be and what it's, what's its purpose. And once we brought the, uh, the group that was helping us in, they actually had some experience doing this type of stuff. And they're like, you know what, we're not gonna storyboard. We're not going to plan it out. We're just gonna come in and film a whole lot of content, let you guys tell your story um, in a variety of different ways and settings and, and formats. And then we're going to piece that together for you into a final product. That's what we ended up doing, which surprised me. Cause I was like, well, I really want a script. I want like this whole thing planned out, but it ended up being a much more organic process that they, they were comfortable with. Okay, good. Um, there's a lot of, there's some questions already for people saying, can you give me the contact information for that company? Um, so we'll, we'll ask them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you can talk the name of the company, if it's a company and if you can share their, their contact info, we can always put it into the YouTube. Um, yeah. and it's later, but here in the chat, if you want to put it in the chat. They're Crystal to... Daisy Productions, crystaldaisyproductions.com. They're based in Kansas city, but they do filmography all over, all over the U S. And they, can, and they included editing too, shooting and editing, everything. It was actually unlimited edits um, until we were happy. Uh, they provided the royalty-free music. They had access to some of those databases and was able to help do that. But yeah, it was, it was, really, it was really fantastic. We had to go back and back, recover, record some things that didn't come out quite right. And so I had to meet back up with them twice to re-record audio on the same equipment in a similar environment so that the audio didn't get weird during the video. All right, so let me let me pause here then with you, uh, Jim. Thank you for that initial um, set of answers, um, and I'm going to go on to Blythe. Um, so so thanks, uh, Jim. Uh, terrific video, by the way. I, every time I watch it, I, you know I, I love it. So great yeah. job. Um, all right, so let me go on then uh, to bring on Blythe in a second here. Um, first, let me go ahead, Blythe, and uh, and play your video. So give me one moment for that. Um, I'll add you in and remove myself so you can uh, you can shine over there on the uh, the side of the screen um, while we're uh, while we're playing your video. Um, so hold on for one moment uh, and let me cue yours up. So let's go uh, full screen on that as well. Hold on, got too many windows open here. All right, now I can go full screen. All right, stand by, Blythe. Here we go. My name's Andy. I joined the military when I was 17 years old. I was diagnosed with PTSD in 2015. PTSD absolutely changed my life forever. It's estimated that 60 million Americans suffered from PTSD just last year. We typically think of veterans, but first responders and healthcare workers get PTSD at the same rates and one in nine women will have it at some point in their lives. So for those seeking treatment, 66% still have significant symptoms that they need help with. Evren's Phoenix Earbud is a breakthrough in the treatment of PTSD. The Phoenix delivers a personalized level of electrical stimulation through the skin of the ear and targets the vagus nerve. This technology promises to be a game changer. I've seen patients who go from um, severe and debilitating PTSD to significant symptom reduction 
and in some cases, complete remission. What Evren provides is a comprehensive solution for both treating and monitoring the progress of my patients with PTSD. I mean, I realized like I, I needed change. I needed something. And my wife would say that she got her husband back and my kids would say that they got their father back. All right, um, Blythe, uh, great job. Um, let me add myself back in over here. So, uh, so Blythe, maybe we can start off with the same, uh, you know, same kind of question for you. So, over overall, um, you know, that, that terrific video. You have any idea what the off the loops? Something else. In Forty seconds. Uh, Less. Someone's like. Let me stop that. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so tell me a little bit about you know the budget on this one for you. What what did that one cost? Yeah, we were a little bit more than Jim. We probably spent six to seven altogether. Um, we had used, so uh, if anybody knows Evren, we, before we got into MedTech Innovator, had a video of Andy, um, but it wasn't this full thing. It was just Andy's story. And we had used a really awesome guy down in Florida. So I'll also drop Digital Fury. Uh, he's local to Central Florida, though, so he's probably not going to go outside the state. Um, he's amazing award-winning and he had given me a great deal because through a friend. Um, so we knew we were going to use him. It was just a matter of actually finding a day that he was available because he was swamped. Um, but yeah, he was willing to do it with us. So, it, and then we also added professional, uh, makeup and Marcus, who is our gentleman who keeps putting in the earbud in all the pictures. He's actually my head of R and D. I made him get a haircut, so I paid for that as well. So we we did all of those things. Right. So so that's great. So uh, you know, so you had you, you had some footage already of Andy that you had already shot, and you combined that in with some other things to tell your story here. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll get to that. So that's great. Um, uh, you know, again, going back to some you know some basic questions, and we'll get into more detailed ones with all three of you guys together. Um, another thing, you know, is is kind of like again the prep. So, you know, was there a lot of prep that went into this? Was this, was this a, um, you know, was, was something you scripted? You know, tell us how that went. Yeah, there was a ton of prep. I actually did a day of whiteboarding um, with my team. We really wanted to focus on getting a lot into that time. And we did go over the minute because we wanted to make sure we included Andy with everything else. But you'll see that while we're talking and saying, you know, this is a groundbreaking treatment, we're listing on the screen the benefits of the solution or, you know, so we definitely thought about the layers of visual versus audio on what was going on and everything that we wanted to include. I will say I fully scripted everybody's words. And then Mark was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. And he had us ad libbing things. And he's very good though at getting you to get to the right phrases that you want to include. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we, we know a little bit about then, you know, some of the, uh, the work that went into, you know, creating this, um, what would you say was the elapsed time from start to, you know, the time that you said, all right, we're going to start working on this video until you delivered it. How long do you think that was? Yeah, it probably took us a, about a month to pull it all together. I'm not sure we actually had that much time from the time that we knew we were doing it until it needed to be done. Um, but it was all about finding a day where, Mark, the guy that was filming it, and uh, Dr. Marshall, our clinician, could be available all at the same time, and we could be at his offices to do the filming with him, because we really wanted to include a clinician to talk about the results that he was seeing. Yeah, and so the, the actual production part of it, the, you know, where you were shooting. Not one day. One day for the production. Mm -hmm. Um, and one and, day for the previous Andy footage. I was going to say, and one day for the previous Andy footage. You probably couldn't have done that all in one day because you had Andy out in a field somewhere running around with a dog, and you had the uh, you had your expert at his you know place of work. It looks like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that's some some initial background, um, and then we'll get into the other detailed questions after our third video. All right, Blythe. All right. Um, there's a whole ton of questions for you already um, going on. So we'll, we'll get into those those questions in a little bit. Um, but thanks. Thanks, Blythe. And by the way, award winning video. Um, so uh, great job, Blythe, um, on that. Um, OK, so let's go ahead then and um, and bring in Nick. 
Uh, and so, Nick, uh, I'm excited to uh, also show your video here. So get you up on the spotlight and uh, let's go ahead and do the same. We'll get your video playing. So stand by on that. And here we go. All right. So here's your video. Silk is amazing. The result of over 400 million years of evolution, silk can be 25 times as tough as steel, yet is as light and flexible as gossamer. Orthox was founded to develop these remarkable properties of silk to heal the human body. Using patented technology developed at the University of Oxford, Orthox extracts silk proteins and forms them into FibroFix, implants designed to immediately repair injuries with a strong natural replacement while the body's own healing processes regenerate healthy new tissue that works with the FibroFix implant to provide a long-lasting solution. Silk is both exceptionally strong and completely tolerated by the human immune system. So when FibroFix is implanted, cells will move into its protective structure and multiply, healing the injury. The first focus for FibroFix is the knee joint. Experiencing huge loads and millions of steps every year, the smooth, strong, resilient cartilage which protects our knees is often damaged, leading to pain, loss of mobility, and ultimately osteoarthritis. Healing knees is just the first step for this ambitious company. So join Orthox on our journey on the Silk Road to harness the power of nature and regenerate the human body. Right, so great job, uh, Nick, on that. Uh, again, uh, another terrific video. Um, so, so maybe we can just start off, you know, again with the same question I've asked everybody. Just overall, in terms of, uh, you know, production cost, um, what, what, what did that cost? So we went real budget basement. Uh, well, um, yeah, I mean, we were in the. The, the, the alumni who were in the middle of COVID and basically got knocked out of our clinical phase um, and set back by about two years. So frankly, every budget that I had went out the window, apart from keeping the lights on and uh, keeping the preclinical going. So um, what I did was get a, an, an intern student in um, on her MSc course and gave her this project and said, look, take it away. Um, and so she uh, pulled together an awful lot of stuff for us, and we spent about uh, a total of a total of about twelve hundred dollars on on everything that was out of pocket expenses. Um, and then at the end of the whole process, we, we she she brought in a friend of hers who was on on the course in the in the arts department. He did all the film shooting for us. Uh, he did it all for free because he was pulling this together for a, a project that was going to support his course. Um, but we gave him $1,000 at the end of it as well. So I guess it cost us just over 2000 at the end of the whole process. But if I'd been flint-hearted, then it would have been a $1,200 project. Okay. Um, and, uh, and that's impressive, uh, you know, for what you, uh, for what you created. Terrific video. Uh, and, uh, and in terms of the elapsed time from the very, very beginning when you first said, we're going to start working this video until you deliver it at the end, what do you think the length of time? So Yasmin was with us over the summer. So um, it was six weeks, I think. She she basically had a week to uh, to get to know the company um, and figure out, you know, what we were about. And then she spent the remaining of the five weeks that she was with us uh, working on this um, and pulling everything together. So yeah, it was it was it was about a six week project. Um, I think I was involved in it fairly intensively for about three weeks, and uh, you know, it was. Um, uh, the latter stages were pretty, pretty compressed, I would say. Okay. Um, and in the actual production, like, you know, when they shot you, they had, uh, when they, when they did your filming, how, how long was that? Was it just one day? A little bit uh, yeah. Day? So they did, um, they did a shoot. Uh, I mean, that was about, that was about 40 minutes, I think of, um, of shooting with me. Uh, they did also in our labs, there were some shots there of, uh, of, um, some of the guys in the lab working away and making the implants. Uh, and uh, then the, the the film student took away some of our product um, and our raw material silk um, and, uh, and and used that. And so he spent a fair bit of time doing that too. But I guess the whole, you know, the whole amount of shooting probably was two days in total. Two days in total. Okay. So not, not a huge amount of time, um, but uh, you know, take away from uh, the team and everything, right? 
Um, so that's good. All right. So, um, so I think we can start with, I think we can start with some of that as like the basic overview for the, for the three videos. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring everybody out, um, for the rest of these questions. Um, and, uh, and, and let's, let's, let's hear, uh, let's, let's get to some more of the meat, um, behind creating these things. So, uh, uh, if, Jim, if you want to turn on your camera, then I can, I can bring you out too. All right. Um, all right. So. Um, we, boy, we've got some, like, you know, a lot to talk about here. Um, as I said, great videos, a lot of content to, to go through. Um, so some of these things I want to talk about is, as, as I said, as a group, um, one of them is just, you know, um, was it challenging? All, all three of you were on camera um, in these videos uh, as leadership. Was it challenging to be on camera? Was it something you were nervous about? Um, did it take you a lot of takes until you didn't, you know, so let me start off with uh, Blythe on this. Yeah, so you might think that this is hilarious, given the fact that I have no qualms jumping up on stage and blabbing about anything or doing Zoom. But the second they stuck a camera like this close to my face, I became a blubbering idiot. Not only that, I don't know if anybody notices this, but I zoom in on it every time I watch that video. I got a stress breakout. I have a zit like right on the side of my mouth for the entire time. The half hour that they filmed me, that thing was popping up and it went away as soon as I got off camera. Again. <laughs> so like I was, a, I was a total mess and stressed out and I couldn't like remember any of my lines. And I mean, he really had to work with me on that. That's funny. How about you, Jim? I, I wasn't as nervous per se, but I do think that it's different talking in a group of people as opposed to like a big, again, glass in your face. And so trying to be natural and, and deliver, and I, I didn't really like memorize, but I kind of knew the outline of what I wanted to say. And sometimes I do it even like, I'd be like, well, let me try it a different way. I just, I, I take a different take and I, I, I try to say the same thing a bunch of different ways just because I wanted to get enough material. So something would come out good at the end. Um, but, but yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a different experience than like pitching in front of a group. How about you, Nick? Yeah, completely. Uh, I mean, I'd echo both of that. It's it's nothing like any other presentation you do or any other kind of. Uh, um, it's just it's just a different thing. That the big camera in your face um, instantly wipes your brain. You don't remember your lines. You don't know what you're doing. You, you start to feel like you're in a goldfish bowl. It's it's bizarre because there's only one other person in the room most of the time, and yet yeah, and the the words coming out of your mouth start to sound really unusual and weird. So I think. Personally, I had to really script it and really stick to my lines. And, and yeah, I mean, say them a bunch of times without a doubt to, to manage to pull it all together. It's um, it's the bit that I completely underestimated because I guess we all do this for a living. We stand up on stage and we kind of we kind of present. And so you think, well, I'm just going to do that. And this, you know, it's four sentences. How long is it going to take? Well, a, a lot longer than you'd expect, I think. Plus, you know, it, it, someone walks in the background, some glint of light goes wrong. The whole thing gets taken down again. So, yeah, much, much more effort and work than I expected. If I could add one thing, we also tried to do it outdoors. So we had mics on us and we, and we tried to do, we, we did a variety. We spent half the day filming outdoors in natural environments around our building. And we ended up having to scrap nearly all of it because uh, the wind was so loud in the mic and it ruined all the audio. And I was like, well, don't you guys just have like a program that makes yeah. that go away? And they're like, no, don't, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had the, the these caused the guy so much trouble. I mean, he was like, glasses on, glasses off. You've got this weird reflection in you. And it was just sort of, you know, can't you make that go away? No, <laughs> it's uh, it's going to look weird. You have to get it right. So, yeah, there was there was a ton of that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, good, good, good uh, tips there. And by the way, I'm the same as you guys. I get up on stage all the time. I can talk in front of an audience forever. But you put a camera in front of me and and tell me to say a specific script. Um, or even a very specific point, I, I, just like you, I, I, I get to do it over and over again. And um, I even figured out like a nifty teleprompter solution to put up in front of my computer that I put like another little tiny screen above where the camera is. Um, and, I'll, and, and I literally, I write out everything I want to say and I hit a button and I have the speed, I have the thing crawling by just like, you know, uh, uh, just like uh, Ron Burgundy in um, uh, The Anchorman, uh, I would say anything that's on that teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> Read what it says, but it's so hard. Um, you just, you know, it's hard to do that. Uh, all right, that's good. And it wasn't just you and, in, in, you know, in, in some cases, Jim, in your, in your video, you had a number of members of your team 
um, it wasn't just you as the CEO, right? So um, same kind of thing. Was it was it difficult for them? Uh, you know, did you have anybody who said, I can't do this and, you know, backed out or what was that like? Yeah, there was some uncomfortableness for sure, but I had given everybody questions to kind of an interview question list to kind of go through. And so they all got to prepare a little bit and think about it. Everybody did great. I think um, the scientists obviously were probably the most nervous and, and, and uncomfortable with it, but um, they were really great when we got a lot of that B-roll, right? Like people in the lab, you know, using the pipettes, doing doing the science part. Um, that was really easy and, you know, for them. And so, yeah, I, I would say overall, the team didn't struggle with that part too much. Everybody was nervous, but they all did a good job. Great. And, and I wanted to highlight them. Like I wanted it to be more than me. I wanted to help the team feel proud of it. So I wanted them to be involved and to be to be a part of it. Um, and we had to cut some people that, that it just, you know, one <laughs> isn't enough time. So we did have to cut some people too that didn't get to show up in the video. Yeah, no, I, I like that choice. I thought, uh, I thought that was a really good choice to have, you know, have a bigger team there. Um, I know, Nick, you had, you know, you had some people pulling on the, you know, from your, it looks like in a lab, pulling on the silk and doing all that. Um, but yep. you were the only one talking. Was that, you know, was that a choice that you decided that it was just going to be you speaking in the video? Um, yes, that? That, that was a, that was a, let's get the whole, the whole company involved in the shoot. And they really enjoyed it. And, and that was a, that was one of the great things about it. It was everyone had a lot of fun. And yeah, a ton of it ended up on the cutting room floor. Um, and there was some, some, yeah, some irritated individuals who didn't get to feature and others who did, but it's kind of the way it works. Um, but it, the, the kind of, talking side of it then we just decided it was uh, it was going to be we had a, quite a busy video i think in many ways we tried to hang the story around the silk and that kind of idea of the of the of the the sort of the, the history to it and the, and the technology and that that kind of thing so we felt if we started to bring in too many additional people it would just in a you know what ended up to be a minute 20 or whatever was just going to get too busy so um we stuck with just me talking and Plus, and I don't think I had many volunteers, to be honest, to do talking head stuff. It was, uh, yeah, they, they were very keen to be on camera, but not to not to do the talking side of things. Yeah, thanks. And, and Blythe, was it just, you know, it was just you in terms of the, from the company in the video. Were, were there other people from the company involved in all these shoots or was it mainly just you? Oh, yeah. So um, our head of R&D is our guy who pretends he's the PTSD patient putting the ear button in and out. And it was surprising because I told him, like, I just need a haircut because I'm just going to get a shot behind your ear when you put it in. And next thing I know, I come out from getting my makeup done and Mark is like in his face with the camera going, OK, now I need you to really nod. Seri I mean, Marcus put up with like hours of B, B reel that he was forced to film. So in Dr. You know. Dr. Marshall was fine in front of that camera. I was like the only person that had problems in front of the camera, I feel like. Right, that's right. No, I forgot, right, and you have your expert as well. Um, yeah. So, and I think, by the way, just as a point, uh, I, you know, again, you all have different elements in your videos that I'm gonna talk about in a minute here, but um, I thought it was a great choice to have the expert, you know, feature an expert in there talking about why this is gonna be important. So, you know, I like that you did that. Um, not all of you did that, but you know, but I'm saying that's a, that's a great, an, a great story element. So it's not just, so for credibility, having somebody else explain why this is important is good. Um, yeah. You really have to, sorry to interrupt, but I mean, I think every person needs to think about what story works for their company, right? So Nick mentioned the story around the silk and Jim was able to get a lot of really cool work in the lab. That's something that my company really couldn't have, like working on the product type of video. So we we had to focus in different areas. So you have to think about what video you can capture and what works for the story that you guys want to tell. Yeah, agreed. Um, there's a question that somebody asked in uh, in the the Q and A over here that I'm going to ask, um, which is you know, and and some, a couple other people have asked similar things, which is you know ROI besides winning perhaps a, an award for the best video competition, you know how else has this video been helpful? Someone asked, you know, is this help with funding? Is this helped in other ways? Can you guys each tell us a little bit about how the video has helped you beyond just you know having it for the video competition? So um, so I'll start with uh, Jim on this. Okay. Um, it's helped in a bunch of ways and actually uh, not just the video itself, but we recorded so much footage um, and we had to cut a lot of stuff out. So we actually, with these video producers that we worked with, 
Um, they actually produced an additional three and a half minute video telling our story in a more descriptive storytelling way using some of the cut footage. And so I could share that with you. I don't think we've ever seen it, Paul, but we have another video that's three and a half minutes long that kind of more goes into more depth than, than, the, than the one minute does. So we got that kind of out of the process just as a, as a bonus. We also um, got a number of social media videos um, that you guys kind of pushed uh, later on. And we used a lot of our B-roll for some of those social media um, updates. But, but I think from a tangible company perspective, one, if you do it, I mean, if you're going to do it, do it right, because it's a representation of your company, and your quality. So if you do it right, you should be proud of it. And if you do it right, you know, your number one job as CEO is to tell your story in a way that people can relate to. And so this is such an easy thing for intros like, oh, instead of a one, you know, 10 page pitch deck or an executive summary, it's like, oh, you want to meet, go watch my video. And then, uh, you know, then we can talk. And, 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 and it just, it's much more fun. It's much more engaging and it, it, it builds that emotional attachment and you don't have to do it each time. So I, I think there's lots of benefits. We put it on your webpage, put it in your social media, um, use it for fundraising. Uh, it turns into a commercial for customers. I mean, there's so many ways it can be used. So I, I really think there's tons of value in it. And again, we were able to leverage it into multiple, multiple phases of value. Yeah, how about you, Nick? So, I mean, quantifying it very hard because we've used it in a very similar way to Jim um, and it's kicked off an awful lot of, of presentations or it's been used as a, as a front piece to a, a lot of webinars and, and panel presentation sort of things. I guess, you know, the company's going and we've got more followers and we've got more 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 attention and it's definitely been a contributing part of that and and as jim says if you're going to do it do it right and that was the first thing that, that i sort of decided is well you know we could do something which which was which didn't take any time or money and and, and we didn't put any effort into but really what's the point so we we did we did it we did put a, a lot of time into it in the end and i'm glad that we did i think um for us then you know it, it does again similar to jim um, we use it as a starting point for then ramping out to do other areas. And so we're taking our product into China. Um, and it was a pretty swift and easy story to adapt that video for lengthening out a bit, uh, talking about the Silk Road, which is a, a you know, historic concept between China and the UK and getting a voiceover artist um, from, from who, who did the Chinese um, voiceover. You know, it was, it was all of about $200. So it was it was a very easy thing for then for us to use to, to bridge a you know a language gap and a cultural gap and and use as a pitch deck for for sort of a pitch intro for for our engagement in China uh, and it just gets the point across and it gets an emotional attachment straight away as well with that kind of link between China and the UK so um, it's a great thing for kind of yeah to build on it's a good starting block and it gets you gets you gets you the first base straight away I think and that's the you know that's half the battle. Excellent, Wyth. Anything you want to add to that? Well, we did it a little in reverse order because, as I mentioned, we already had Andy's story. And if you guys go to the Everin website, you can see Andy's story, which I think is one of the reasons that we did so well getting into MedTech Innovator because I played the beginning of my pitch. Um, so that is technically like another video from the Be Real. If you were, if you don't have a patient testimonial video, you can create that. For my pitches. I preferred to have a patient story that was nice and succinct and then go into the business side for me just talking to it. Whereas this is more of an overarching picture of the company. So it's not something that I use at the beginning, but yeah, I mean, we have used it everywhere and we've used the B-Rail a lot. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I was willing to spend $6,000 to make sure it was done right. Because I knew this was going to be a video that was going to be really useful to us moving forward. And so that's how we treated it. We wanted to make sure that it was really impactful. And, you know, it, if you want to get to the top numbers on views on your video, you want something you're willing to have people watch over and over every day and not be embarrassed by. Yeah, no, it's a good point. And, and by the way, I didn't ask this question of everybody. I think I only asked it of Jim initially, but but Blythe and Nick, did you guys watch other videos for inspiration as well before you did this? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. first thing we did was was go through the back reel and, uh, and check out the ones we like. And that, that formed uh, the basis of our storyboard was basically picking the bits we liked and, and banging them onto a storyboard for, uh, for our video. Did yeah, we focused a lot on one group that, had a very similar technology to ours that had done well. 
Yeah, I was going to say, did anybody you like, did any of you, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I know the answer to Jim already because yours wasn't scripted, but um, did any of you like take uh, the, the the arc and the details kind of of another video and literally just like copy paste and just kind of replace it with your own version? Um, or or was, or would you say that you did not do that? No, I think I, what I did was say, okay, every good video covers a problem, a solution, what's your secret sauce, and something that made it feel like you were really a going concern, whether that's a finished looking product or the clinician talking about your results or you're showing your results. Um, you know, how are you really making it seem as though you guys aren't just some startup with no back? A good, it's a great point. Um, and I, by the way, I'd recommend it to anybody. Um, you want to show something that that shows you're a going concern, even if you're at the super early stage and all you've got is a you know a horribly you know rough prototype. Show it. Show the people oh. on the bench working on it. Right. Quick you secret: know. that earbud that Marcus kept putting in that is literally a 3D printed thing that then I put clay on and then painted. It had no ear fitting in it, and only Marcus could put it on because it was specifically molded to his ear. So like nobody needs to know. <laughs> Right. But it does. But, you know, but but being on the show that makes people say, OK, this is this company is for real. Yeah. Um, uh, and and that's important. I um, feel like this, uh, is, this is permanently going on YouTube. I should say we do have a working prototype. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now let me ask you another question. Animation. All of you had some form of uh, what looked like animation in your videos. Um, uh, just quickly, kind of similar to the original question about production. Did you guys do that in-house? Did you have somebody outside do that? And, uh, and, and you know, again, like kind of the subset of cost and time and all that. Um, so I'll start with you, Blythe. There was like some animation of like, you know, signals going into the brain. Was that stock footage or was that something you guys actually did? So it is something that was included in the price with Digital Fury. He had some guys in Europe that did his animation for him. And we went back and forth on, I provided the stock brain imagery. And then we talked about how we wanted to show this signal going and where it had to go from and to, and they kind of did the rest. Right. Uh, Jim, how about you? Um, did you have any? Um, we, we, we didn't really have traditional animation in that way. We had kind of these closers that they, the, the videography people did. But what we, wasn't as much in the video, but what we've done is we've got CAD. So we've got a tool along with some chemicals. And so for the tool in the background, uh, we've got the CAD up while a guy's talking showing our product and then um again not really for the video but we actually use a program called blender we'll export that to a 3d if it's a free open source 3d program where we can render it out in animations or stills that look photo real and so we got a pipeline that we built for doing that so we can take any of our models and create final professional images great idea nick you had more more graphics or cads and things of your products too right yeah so so um all of the stuff of our product was the film student doing his magic with a macro camera and he was great at that and it was uh you know obviously that's not not open to to, to everybody i guess but uh we were lucky on that so i guess that was the that was the magic bit for for our video everything else animation wise the sort of the osteoarthritis and people's knees getting destroyed and stuff like that was uh, stock footage off um that was free all of it was free from a, a website i think called upsplash so, um, you know, we've got a fairly common problem and there's a, just a ton of, of animations out there, freebie animations out there for, for doing it. So, yeah, it was no problem at all to source as much as we wanted. Great. Um, and, uh, and, you know, you mentioned stock footage. Anybody else? I think you guys all maybe had, I don't know if you all had stock footage, um, but uh, any other stock footage, Blythe, you or Jim? I think you guys are shaking your head. Um, I'm trying I don't to think... think if I had stock footage. I think yeah. we, may... oh, you know what? Um, Mark had just done something on domestic abuse. And so he was like, oh, I actually have stuff we can use. I just did something. You'll see that it's actually like our local hospital in the background when they, so he had already taken some stock footage for another video that he used. You had it. Um, and, and, uh, and as far as um, Blythe, going back to you for, because you had an outside, you know, you had your expert talking about the product, right? Mm -hmm. um, and was that was that challenging to get him to do it um or was that uh or was no it, it, I, I thought it was gonna be worse i mean I, I have dealt a lot with kols right so you get all sorts of different personalities and dr marshall was great on camera i mean he was great and and i remember at one point you know i i 
I wanted certain terminology, right? Like it was groundbreaking or, or things like that. Cause we had just gotten breakthrough device designation. So we wanted to kind of work it in somehow. And Dr. Marshall would talk about anything, but I remember Mark going, so tell me a little bit more about this. Well, and, and he said something, he goes, so would you say this is like a groundbreaking technology? And he goes, Oh yeah. And just starts giving you the wording back. You know, he, I mean, he was great. And he didn't, I don't think he realized that Mark used that little trick on him, but um, no, I mean, he was very excited to participate. He was the clinician that did our trial. And so he saw results that he was really excited about and was really cool to work with. Awesome. Um, and, and you mentioned, uh, Nick, I think Unsplash was the, uh, was one of the places that you, you referenced, right? That was, is that where you got all of your, yeah, yeah, no, Unsplash, Unsplash, that's, uh, yes, got just tons of free footage and, uh, you can find whatever you're looking for really there. Um, so yeah, recommend you go and have a look. Okay. A uh, couple more things. We, so uh, a couple of you kind of mentioned this, but just to reinforce it. So um, someone said it was fun. You know, was this a, would you say this was a good team building exercise for your company, you know, in, in creating these videos? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's always fun. Um, we've had a fair few sort of camera crews coming in and do spots over the year and it just jazzes everything up. Everyone feels like film star for a little bit. So it's, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite a team bonding thing. Yeah, no, uh, for sure. I, I know that every time we've done videos, we all spend the rest of the day laughing, you know, about about the uh, about actually creating it because it is a lot of fun, especially when people are on camera and someone's prompting them. And you know, I I mean, we found like we've had you know other team members prompt somebody and stand behind and ask the questions if necessary. You know, whatever it takes to make them comfortable. So, uh, you know, what else was really team building was the weak push to get views. Yeah. Because it was all, who can we reach out to and what can we do next and constant brainstorming about trying to get it out there. Yeah. All right. So I got five minutes left in the public part of this YouTube um, part of our webinar, and then we're going to go to Q&A with the companies. Um, so let me just cover a couple other things then in terms of like components that you use. So Jim, I'm going to start with you on your video. So, um, you know, so you made the choice to have you as the narrator um, uh, and, uh, and, and Blythe, you were the narrator and, uh, and then Nick, you had someone else narrating. Um, was that because you were also going to do the Chinese version? Did you not want to have yourself narrating? Why did Why did you choose to have someone else as a professional? So it was a uh, yeah. It gave, gave two reasons. One is that this was partly produced because we're next move for us is to is to try and engage with the U.S. market, and we felt that that would be helpful to have a um, a bit more of a, a a U.S. accent perhaps on the uh, on the background. Um, and it also gave us the opportunity as well for looking at, right, we can just switch in another an, another VO artist for, for other territories, other countries, and it'll be something we can quickly, quickly and easily do. And, you know, we can subtitle me for, for other languages, but because it's pretty short spots that, 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 uh, that we can do. Plus, I guess it's confidence thing as well. I didn't know if I could do the full thing, um, not having done camera work before. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that was the reason we went that way. Okay. Um, next question on um, uh, on the platform. So, you know, in the case of, you know, Jim and Nick, you guys both have platform technologies, right? Silk in, you know, in one case and exosomes. So you had to like also explain, you know, that a bit before you kind of even got into, you know, what the problem was, you know, what now getting into a disease area. Um, was that was that something that was, you know, I, I mean, again, you know, just more of a, a question was that it was was it more challenging to to set that up to try and you know just con you know so I guess maybe I'll start with you Jim because it, not everybody knows what exosomes are um, and I think if I were to say in general every time I talk about Clara and I say you know exosomes people go what's an exosome what's that <laughs> yeah right so I guess that was you know a goal of yours was to explain what exosomes are in general before you even got into what it could be used for and it would take half of the video to explain that and so. We didn't even try. And so if you watch our video, it's very untechnical. It's really, we, we just mentioned that it's around exosomes and we tell people that they're exciting. If they're interested, they can kind of find out later. To me, it's just really, it's a teaser. It's an opener to get them interested. So I don't really want to share any of the secret sauce or technical details. I just want to tell our story in a way that they can relate to where they are. And so enabling the future, enabling a bunch of new opportunities and technology, that's the communication we wanted to, to convey. 
And uh, I worked very hard to, to make it non-technical. You know, I feel like if, if someone watched the video and didn't understand it or didn't connect, then we failed. And if I made it about exosomes, that would happen. So it had to be about what the company is about and what we're trying to change at a high level so that we can engage everybody. And we actually went through multiple rounds of revision, sharing it with people outside of our network or, you know, outside of our technical network and say, like, what do you think? What was confusing? What was hard? And we went through probably four rounds of modifications to, to, to clean the story. Yeah. Did you guys all do that, by the way? Did you get, you run this video by outsiders and say, what do you, you know, this with lay people? Um, did you all do that? Life. I, you know, we didn't have, I think, a massive amount of edits. And I think I showed it to like friends and family, but not to clinicians or investors or anything to do true voice of customer. Yeah, but, but lay people, right? Friends and family, people who didn't know that much about everything. Yeah, like, does this make sense to you? Did we right. explain it? And, I, you know, I think it's interesting that Jim left out sort of explaining the mechanism of action. It worked. It, I didn't even feel it in his video that it wasn't explained. And that's probably why a lot of us end up going over one minute. Yeah. And how about you, Nick, on that? Did you guys, uh, you're muted, but um, did you, uh, did you shop, did you show this around to a, a bunch of people after you unmute? Well, uh, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me okay? Doesn't yeah, sound muted. Yeah, no worries. Um, so we didn't have uh, we didn't have enough time to do a real kind of um, uh, sort of beta testing of it, I guess. Um, it got the rounds of the company uh, and everybody in the so the bits that they liked and the bits they didn't before we did the final edits, um, and that was that was useful, I, I think. But it, it's a pretty simple story, so I don't think there was anything in there again, which you know we didn't we didn't go massively into how the technology works. It was. Uh, it was, you know, this is a cool, this is a cool technology. It's going to help people's knees get better. Um, that's that's kind of the, the level that we were really pitching it at. So uh, I don't think it felt like we had to to get a lot of voice of customers kind of stuff involved in it. Okay. Last two questions. Number one, was there like one key kind of memorable thing you were shooting for people to leave with? Was there like something where like if if people just leave this video with one thought, um, what do we want it to be, or one feeling, or one you know, something, was there, was there anything that you, you know, kind of consciously maybe, at, you know, whether you did it in the beginning when you shot it or at the end after it was edited, was there something you said, like, if they leave with just one thing, it's that, do, do any of you have that kind of a thing that coming out of this, you wanted people, you know, Blythe, I mean, I, I, I always talk about Andy, you know, it's like, you know, he got his family back kind of thing. They got their Yeah. Family. I mean, I think for us, it was, how can we be as impactful as the Andy video, but explain more about the company? And, and so we really struggled on like, what can we keep from Andy to keep that part of the story and, and still show that we're getting results now as well. Yeah, how about you, uh, Nick? Was there, a, was there a one, was there any kind of thing you said like, yeah, people need to leave and know what, what, what's, that silk is useful? Like, was, what was your thing that you wanted to leave people with? I think that, you know, what, what we wanted to do was, was to, to give the impression that we were perhaps a bit of a bigger company than we were. Um, as said, at the time, at the time we were doing it, we were feeling pretty threadbare. And I wanted basically to, um, to, to as much for the internal team as anyone else, but also the investors to sort of project that this was a company that could, could do a global thing. So there's an image, complete non secretary in the vi video of a globe spinning. And actually that had a sort of stat in it about the number of people in the world who, who had, um, you know, knee replacements and things like that. And we had to cut it because we didn't have enough time. But the image stayed in because everybody liked that globe spinning. And we started off in China with a shot of kind of silt forests where the stuff is made and all that kind of thing. And we just wanted to project that we were a bit of a bigger concept than you know than a 200 square foot office in 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 south of oxford and, and that that for me it did that so that 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 was a that was a that was a win i think yeah i think it was a win too jim uh you uh last one on this question uh anything um, you want to go with? yeah i think uh what you said at the beginning was kind of my goal like my my goal is to let people know that this is a big deal this is an, a rocket ship that they want to be excited about and learn more about and, and join in on i think that for us it's a lot less custom like we weren't making a commercial for the product i think you really want to think about what is the goal of this video and for us it was really to tell people our story broadly more for uh, industry connections investors and 
things like that. So, so that's why we chose to go so non-technical. It's the audience. If we, if we go technical, even investors get lost. So um, I think you got to just be really simple with your messaging. But for us, it was just really to generate excitement. And to me, just like sales, it's really to get to that next stage, open the door, start a conversation and, and just get them interested enough to want to learn more. Great. All right. Last question. If you could do anything differently now, you've watched your video again, you've had a year or more to think about it. Uh, is there anything that you would advise people out there as like a piece of advice um, that, you know, or you could just be a piece of advice in general. But now, again, as I said, if there was something you would do differently or anything else, any advice that um, that you guys want to give to people, I'll start with Nick on this one. I just it's the really obvious and boring one. Start as early as you can, um, because it, it, the, the bit that takes time and time and time and time is edits and reshoots. And, and, and there's a deadline and, you know, you, you, you kind of just get, get going early. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's the, it's the most important thing. That's good. Um, Blake. Honestly, I wouldn't change anything. I mean, I was very careful about the preparation of it and I think it executed really, really well. Um, you know, and I can't do anything about the fact that I broke out. So <laughs> <laughs> Don't break out the night before. Uh, yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. Uh, and, and Jim, any uh, any tips or anything for, for our, our viewers here? Yeah, I mean, I think the, there was two ways we could do it. We could have gone to the university we were nearby and maybe rented some equipment and done it ourselves. And I think that um, going with professionals who can set everything up, use the equipment, know the best lighting, know the way to frame it. I think that just, it, it just, it it's the way to go if you can do it. And so I think the way we did it was good. Um, and I would do it the same way again. Yeah. And by professionals, students are professionals. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, they can be for sure. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I mean, I think that's, uh, that, that's what we would have done without a doubt. We would have, we would have cut a lot of time and, and, and all the rest out of it, but it, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an option for us, but it, I'm amazed how much you can get out of, you know, um, just wrangling it. Basically we got voiceover from Fiverr cost. $75. We got, you know, um, free stock footage. You can pull an awful lot together um, if you can't go with the professional route uh, from just, yeah, from finding someone who knows the ropes a bit and, um, and, and using their info. Awesome. Um, all right. So for, uh, for our YouTube audience, this is an hour. So we're going to wrap up the YouTube portion here. Um, for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, medtechinnovator.org slash live is where all these videos will live for the rest of our webinar series. So we encourage you to check that out. Um, there's also a subscription box on that page at medtechinnovator.org slash live. Uh, where you can sign up and get a notice in advance. You'll get emails that tell you when we have our next webinars coming up. Um, there'll also be a full schedule as well as our upcoming webinars. They tend to be Thursdays at the same time. So um, we'll look forward to seeing the YouTube audience again. Thank you guys for being here. Um, and these will 